Peace and blessings, Shamaka Set. All up in your, your ear hole, get live with it. Wednesday, 7, kickback, dash radio. Love is love, peace, prosper, unity, fun. Crazy, like, spiritual experiences or, like, I've had an out of body experience that like kind of blew my mind one time. I walked on water. No shit. No shit. But you're so kid, don't be so arrogant. Bees in the place, you know. We got the Sarah from the 1994. Japanese. Shaman cassette Boom. back in what the building. Up? Back in the mix. It's the kickback show, Hollywood, California Dash Radio. Welcome back, fam. How you been? Appreciate you, brother. I've been good, man. No complaints. Can't complain about anything underneath all this sunshine. What's up? That's, That's what's up, it. man. So I know I've been staying in communication with you uh, since the last time you were on the show. Oh, yeah, man. You've been good about that. We've and been you've been all over cool the world, contact. too, man. Yeah, you've been man. good about getting out there. Got to go. Got to go spread it out, man. Right, right. sit here and do it. <laughs> I'm digging the headpiece. Appreciate it. So what's that all about? Is that uh, a custom piece that you did yourself? Or? Nah, honestly, man, I actually earned this. Like, I rode an elephant. Oh, with, no shit. With no saddle in Thailand. For how long? Like, how far? <sighs> Hours. So it's like Five once you hours. get to the end, you're like, yo, here's the, the Yeah, crown. they had to get me off. The elephant was all up in the mix. We had like a nice little connection going, like locked in by the ears, right. ears around the thighs, just like Getting going it. through the jungle, man. It was cool. Straight through the jungle? Bruh, yeah, straight through the jungle. First thing you did, jumped off a cliff, chomped a leaf out the tree. The elephant? Elephant. While bro. you were on his back? While I was on his back. Wild. Hit the, hit the little water, hit the river. Damn. East through the river. Wait, yeah. wait, when were you in Thailand? This was I was in Thailand probably like what, like a year ago. Okay. A year and a half, something like that. That's tight. So is that like a it's like if if you is this like if you It's like the village. This, Honestly, it's like the village vibe, but I had like such a cool connection with the village right. that they were just like, Yeah. They blessed is, you. Yeah, they blessed me. That's tight. You basically in other words, you're down. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you it was earned tight. it. You went right. through the whole climbing the tree. <laughs> right. thing I'm with like the every everyone else was all like getting on these big death. saddles. I right. was like, nah, man, it's not the way Real meal deal. Right, you got one chance, man. I'm going to hop straight on, straight. Was it hard? No, because it got down on the floor. Like, as I walked up, that's the thing that encouraged me to do it. It walked up, and then it kind of, like, did the hydraulic thing, leaned to the left a little, dropped oh, down. Oh, they kind of dropped down dropped to Dropped down, gave me the like... little signal to, like, come on, hop on. So I, like, was like, what? Dropped a little lower, so I walked on, stepped up. He took off. Bam. Bam. <laughs> got the hat. So like hours, just mobbing. Yeah, just elephant. hours mobbing, man. It's a nice hot day. I'm talking about. He's like drinking water, tossing the water back, spitting it, cooling me off. Tight. Like, <laughs> Can't tight. be mad at that. Right. Love the animals, man. Did he have a name? Didn't even need a name, right? Bro. Just Some things homie. just don't need it, right? right. Just the homie. He's a spirit. You're pretty big on fashion. Like I dig the jacket. I man. love and fashion. You've been man. like, I think the last time we talked, you were like, just got featured on Vogue or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I had just done some stuff with Vogue and um. That was during the time I was being featured with uh, the homie um, Parker Day. She was doing an exhibition called Icons. And um, Vogue caught wind of it along with some other publications. And that was a cool little ride to surf out. Was nice. A lot of stuff like that. Tapping out the fashion wave. You still doing much? What other fashion stuff are you working on now? Since? Really right now, man, I'm like... I'm like a mad archive person, so like I go around and find stuff that should be in museums, and I just like, rock I don't it. know, man. I just rock it and just like spend time with it. Like it's just the art, you know. Like that's what I do a lot. So other than that, I'm doing a lot of hands-on stuff when I'm back in LA. And in between, like usually like a lot of footwear stuff. I'm doing like a little bit of apparel stuff. Whole lot of like repurposing, customizations, basically. The whole way for me is giving new life to old things. Like right. Stuff people don't care about. It's I just love that about beat. you. I've seen Appreciate you customize it, and do a bunch of... You came yeah, here last just, time with a boombox that had Gucci yeah, speakers, yeah. and I was like, this guy. I just hate to see things die, man. It's like, there's some beauty in the ugly sides of everything. Right. So just like... No, like I 100% agree with you, man. 
You got so you said sneakers. Like what? You got some shoe brands coming out or what, what's up? I've with that? actually had a couple shoe releases already that I've done, like mass produced pieces of footwear. Because that's actually my background. I went to FIT for footwear and handbags. Oh no shit. People don't really know that, but yeah. <laughs> you still making handbags? Not really. I like make bags, but like I don't really go all out making like hinged and unconstructed handbags and stuff, but I'm able. I make quite a bit of duffels and things, but it's just whatever I can get my hands on, whatever I'm inspired by. Right. I'll make whatever, like I'm able. So you raw with the sewing machine? Super raw. You get, like you get the embroidery joint or what? I, I do embroidery with my hand, man. Sometimes really? I don't like the machine because like it's I like painful. the... No, man, it's like therapeutic. Like and thread you got to get a thimble. There's like all right. types of machines like... Hand tools I've you done can some use. Of that stuff. I've sewn on patches. By the end of the patch, I'm like, man, you got to see. That's the thing you do when you're traveling on a long trip. You appreciate it. Like time will go by fast, and you'll just be there with your hands because right. you can't sew in your sewing totally, machine. It's a craft. Yeah, and it's the time a craft. you get done, you're like, uh, you're like, like yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So like, that's that's like the reason why I love it. It's like real slow, and then once you're there, it's like, like mindless work. Mindless work, man. Then you appreciate it more because it's like, yo, this took me hours. I like that. <laughs> So Bon Voyage, um, explain what Bon Voyage is. Like, because I've seen you release a bunch of records. And it's kind of like, you put out a lot of different styles of music, I've noticed. Yeah. Like, you got hip hop, you kind of got some vibey house stuff. Yeah. And then, like, I could pretty much give a quick rundown of like how that goes that okay. way. Basically, I was from a hip hop background, basically like a hip hop punk background. My uncle, who I was influenced by, was actually discovered by Dad Kennedy's in the Bay Area. So he was like one of the first like raptivists or political rappers that they had Raptivist. discovered and signed. Yeah, like so that. he was all about pushing the message, man, like utilizing his platform. His whole mantra was like, "There's only one race, peace to the human race." Like Fair that enough. was his whole thing that he that he always spilled and like. It was super punk at the same time. So, right. like, when I was growing up, it's like my edges were like from punk to like jazzy hip hop, like all day, like in my head. Yeah. So, with that being said, like, I kicked off into like this really, really cool, like hip hop, jazzy stuff. And yeah, then, I can imagine, like, your own sound. Yeah, man, that was it. Cause I was like just absorbing all the influences. And then from there, it became a point where I kind of got bored. And when I got bored with just, like, doing traditional, like, hip-hop, not that it got boring, but it was, like, it wasn't as challenging for me. The most challenge at that point was us finding all this old vintage analog gear uh -huh. to make our sound with. That became, like, the biggest challenge because it took years. Because you wanted, like, the original We wanted the sound. original. We didn't want to play with these, like, downloading these sound kits. We didn't right. do any of that. So we what like, kind of gear were you getting, searching uh, for? Uh, we had all this music that we're going to be listening to on the show is all SP-1200, ASRs, like, all those so things. people who don't NPCs, know those are samplers, right? Those are the real deal that your favorite boom bappians, like, used to make those sounds right like, without a doubt just pulling stuff from pulling tapes stuff and, and, and then like we record it to tape so you get the warm fuzz on it yeah. And yeah man it's like the beautiful part is the process for that right yeah but so fast forward like I've, i got kind of like bored i got wanted to do something else and um i kind of got started dabbling in more like electronic sounds mm-hmm so, like, electronic sounds was my way to kind of just, like, get more, like, hype into some, like, different platters. Just have another way to, like, express this, like, rage punk side. Right. And so I was doing a lot of, like, that stuff. I, like, signed on to Ultra at that time. So I was doing, like, a lot of stuff, like, a lot of tours through Ultra Records. So the whole, like... Were you DJing or performing? Nah, I was or? performing. Nah, I was rapping. What? Okay, you were rapping. Yeah, like, I used to be with this crew called, uh, actually, Sex Cult. And um, they're like another crew from New York. It's sex like, Cult? Yeah, Sex Cult. It's like a record label. Got it. So uh, it was led by a crew called Designer Drugs. Like those, my brothers, they pretty right. much like plugged me with the whole platform with the whole EDM or electronic sound at the That's time. So they like. Did you ever play an Ultra Music Festival? Yeah, we played that before. Or yeah. rap? Yep. Tight. Rapped it. Yep, rapped it. That's dope. Yeah, we did the one in Miami, I think. That's, it was. A, that's like the biggest one, I think. Yeah, right? so that was that's cool. That's what I think of when I think Ultra. Yeah, there like... was a lot of perks that went along with that situation. And then, like, after a while, I realized that this is cool, but like, I'm not able to say the things I want to say and use my platform to like talk to these people the way I want to talk to them. So I need to figure out another way. And why, so, why is that? Why were you unable to? Just because it was like the way it was received at shows, kind of. It was like kind of a break in the system. And what I realized with that break was, it was like there was more people at the rap shows or 
the EDM shows that were kind of just either like mad dancing their face off, mm -hmm. like completely just out of Insane, it. Insane, yeah. Or they were super chill to the point where it was kind of just kind of just being absorbed, but right. not like vibing reciprocated, out. just vibing out. So from that point, I was like, all right, I got these two things going on. I've had quite successful runs with both of them. And what's next for Shimon? What's next? So right. I like literally met these guys um, through some other mutual people. And I met another one actually at a warehouse party in New York. And we basically joined forces and realized that we had this common uh, liking for a sound called Hip House, Acid House, that a lot of people weren't too like fond with. So with that, we just really started going on with that. And then these guys are also like on these big, they're like, really really spiritual not re so much religious but just spiritual and mm -hmm. just being and knowing and like knowing how to like deal with these energies and like vibrations and all that so what we figured and realized was that hip house was the way because we could do things on a certain frequency and it would like kind of trump the whole things that were problems not problems but just like solutions for those things so it was like, it's almost right. like an infusion right Between completely like, that's like it and it was a simple thing it wasn't like oh you know Right. But it was like, all right, now this is working. Like, this is like a scientific thing. So now we just got everyone that's like at a nice place just loving and right. dancing and just this, filling it out. I feel like the vibe, um, just from the songs and records that I've heard that you put out as mm -hmm. Bon Voyage, it's mm -hmm. like Bon Voyage, like, is that now, is that a mixtape or, or, or a series no. or is that just a genre? It is or? a group. Okay, it's a group. It is a group. We call it a band. Got it. Yeah. So Bon Voyage is a band. Because I've noticed yeah. you have a lot of different styles. Who says, I hear the hip-hop elements. I hear the mm -hmm. dancey house elements. Yeah. I feel like also knowing that you've been, like, heavy in the fashion game, mm -hmm. I also I picture, like, Bon Voyage being played at, like, fashion shows. So like, that was the thing. That was That's how we also figured it out. Because the whole time, I thought that the music that I was making when I was making electronic music was meant for, like, runways and fashion shows. Because right. it had, like, a blend of this, like, sex appeal to it. And it had this other type of blend to it that was just like whoa super vibey so putting those two together it was like this shit should be on runways like people should be able to like transcend this through like fashion like right being a vessel it's just like, all I mean, goes fashion together fashion shows technically or, or typically have like people of all walks of life you and that's what it's become cats. yeah definitely now it's like it's a it's an open range for everything man so all those things should be one and the same like it's all um, a projection of the art, really. It's just all, like, somebody's expression. Right. It's just that this one's coming through the speakers and the other one's walking down the runway. But it's all one and the same, really. Yeah, I saw uh, just, I think this morning, a fashion show from, like, New York uh, mm -hmm. Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, what's his name? Like, Phillips something or another um, did the spaceship walkway. Oh, it was like yeah. an alien With spaceship. With the snow and all that? Right, in the snow. I, I was like, lie. that's that the was the most craziest thing I've seen for right, like for a fashion to be honest show. for a fashion show. It looked just looked like a party in space and the right. disco ball exploded. Obviously, fashion shows are pretty dope in my opinion. They're really dope. Yeah. I love them, and you get like dope free shit. That's right, like rare shit under can't, your, can't under your seat. That. Yeah, like yo, what's under the seat? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Let's see, I love my it. Name on it. I'm down. Right. Let's I see. Love it, man. What's the, what are the craziest fashion shows you've been to? The craziest fashion show I. Probably been to it was probably KTZ. Yeah, this is probably like two fashion shows ago because they literally sent a courier, a courier, like I don't know what he came up on, but they like came all the way because I was in London at the time. Mm -hmm. So they literally sent this invitation, this handwritten, like this drawn out, like invitation packaged up in this thing. Wow. And like sent it to the place that I was staying at and like, it's like, yo. I literally, so I go. You're like, I can't dodge this. I can't one. dodge like, this. So I go, official. and it's like I had never seen anything like this. Like you were, you were actually put in a position where you were the model, and the model was going around as if he was the audience, the like audience. role reverse. So they were going through this thing, like you were all caged up and shit. Okay. And like all these models were just going around you and just going all between, and like the, uh, I think. But you, as the audience, were in a cage with you other people. You were in a cage, yeah. How and many was, other people were in this cage? Oh, man, it was loads of people. It was like the <laughs> illest thing ever, and then the dopest like thing. Like in the center like, of the room? In the or? center of the room. It was trippy. So, like, all you can see is, like, people to the left and right of you are, like, right, right to the front, and they're looking all bugged out because they don't know what's going on. And there's just these people, right. like, darting through this thing, like, frantically. And then in That's the right. end, they popped the parachute. It was tight. 
Like Damn. somebody had like a jetpack on, and then like in the end he pulled it, and then it was just like, <laughs> like yo, dope. That was ill. I want to get into a track um, that you did called French Kissing off okay. Bon, or one yes, of the Bon, bon Voyage, Voyage records. So. That one is actually a rare unreleased um, thing that we did. It's basically a homage to Debbie. Debbie? Yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that after yeah. the song. French Kissing right here, Bon Voyage with Shaman Cassette. Loves such such and such passion way so bad donate slide inside your vow vague love departed lips explode your love lips upon taboo places Lingering inside your embraces. French kissing in the USA. 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 Paris is calling. This is calling. Shaman Cassette, that's French Kissing for all you Valentine's lovers out there. They had a good time last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Go download that. You guys got a SoundCloud, right? We do. Bon Voyage NYC. Yeah, you can't go. So New York, right? Is that what you guys all founded? <laughs> See, it's like, came together nah, what? man, we're just creating this mind fuck, really. That's why we call it Bon Voyage, so people think we're French. And then, like, we put the NYC, so they think we're from New York. Ooh, messing with them. I think one of the last times I texted you, you were like in Dublin or something. Yeah, I was you? in Dublin. That's How's like, that? man, that's like home turf. That's everything. So are you, that's where life. are you originally from? 
I'm originally from Japan, actually. Born in Japan? Born and raised in Japan. And like, when did you leave Japan? My, at what age? Japan. I left Japan when I was 17. Okay. Went to America to go be a big rap star. And fell so on, rap has always just been wall. your thing. Always been my thing. Like, I was like 15 already, like, doing shows. I was doing two. I remember one New Year's when I was 15, I did two shows in one night for all. In the, Japan? Yeah, for so years. you were already rapping and performing oh, before yeah. you even moved out of Japan. Oh, yeah. I was already getting it. I was, like, influenced by, like, all my mentors and peers in Japan that I should utilize my status of being able to go to America and go bang out because I was already pretty set to, like, rock out and just be in Japan because I already had, like, a few right. nice situations there. And, um... These guys, like, really, people that I really listened to, the word of them, were like, yeah, man, after you graduate from high school, you should, like, go back to America and, like, your shit will pop off. Right. So I was like, fuck yeah. So I went. and By uh, yourself? Yeah. 17 years old. Were you still, were you still in school or, like? Oh, I was going. Point, I was you? about to go off. I was about to go off to school after that. I finished school, so I was kind of like dabbling whether I was gonna go to school or like go chase this thing. But like, it wasn't really popping like that. So I did wind up going to school. Yeah, but you know, had to roll the dice, man. It was cool. I mean, I feel like a lot of people that come to LA roll the dice. Yeah, you gotta roll Unless the you're dice. Born here, like, like it's one of those things. Like, you, as yeah. a talented either musician or right. artist, it's like, yo, I'm gonna take that chance. Exactly. And really get out there. Yeah, and man. It just goes to say, in. like, you never know. It could go any way. Like, I'm not even gonna front. Right. Shit failed. It was. A oh disaster. no, I know some successful people myself <laughs> that that have moved and since moved back to yeah, their hometown. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Because it just didn't work it just out didn't for work, whatever man. reason. That's the thing. That's all right. Yeah, you can't be mad at that. Mm -mm. I say just keep working. Just keep working. That's it. That's what I always say, man. My whole thing is like, I say, yep, I stay ducked down inside of the think tank and just keep blasting away. That's it, man. Like, right. Put my head up for air every now and then, see what's going on. But other than that, I'm addicted to results. So, like, I get high off seeing things get finished. Tight. So, yeah. So. Follow through. Follow through, Big on man. follow That's through, like huh? it. Big on the follow through. You just, speaking of think tank, I feel like you just brought out a couple items from the think I tank. I did right bring here. out some stuff what straight from right the here? think tank. Basically, this right here, this is a uh, Louis Lecter. The it's Louis like a, Lecter. It's a uh, Lu Louis Vuitton handcrafted uh, Hannibal Lecter mask for that. That's a good look for me right it there. It is a good look. Oh, yeah. I feel like you right certainly you know should. I feel like you certainly should do that. Louis Lecter. Louis Lecter, LL. Okay, so what else you got? Oh, We'll talk about these in a All little right. bit, but got this some is super little dope analog too. devices. So low key, I would even say like high key. Can, can you give I've been basically making out. a lot of art, and like the thing is, I just needed to do this. So a lot of friends have been encouraging me that I should like get this out there and like let people see these things. And then I've had people that have come to my studio and seen them and like tried to give me like large sums of money. So you for make it. these like this is this like a, a common piece that you this make. This is a like common a piece that I make. This is the whole steez. This is how they go. There's like crystals in them. There's like just three dimensional what it shadow is, like, boxes. Exactly. So this is obviously one of your art pieces. Basically for people that can't see and only can listen to this, there's basically like fingers coming out of the side and right. I painted those fingers with nail polish. And then there's like a box that was built, it's like a shadow box, and then I put crystals that I found in Ireland in that one specifically. And then there's some, um, like some native uh, textiles that I added to it. It's like a altar hanging off the top. Cactus, because I love cactus. Um, yeah, there's like a lot going on, man. So right. what you're meant to do is like, there's actually a song, like my work has songs that go to it. So when you look at it, it's just like an audio visual nice. experience, you know. So That's you're dope. like looking at it. What song goes with this one? There's a song called "Cardboard Castle" that goes to that one that is not on the surface yet. Okay, so we <laughs> yeah. can look. We got the visual. Yeah, so we got we the visual. Audio to it down yeah. the road. That's dope. Yeah, audio down the road. But that's, that's what's cardboard up, man. I love flex. I love your creative flow. We were just I talking about that, how man. how a lot of people have always preached, you know, stick to one one specific yeah, thing man, that's and not then like fair, run with whether honest. you're a musician stick to mm -hmm. music if you do video stick to video mm -hmm. but even me as a creative i've always had a hard time sticking to just one because i right, love man. doing all of them exactly and i see you doing the same thing you're doing fashion yeah. you're doing 
visual art like yeah, multimedia man. stuff you're making music bro, and it's I've like, like i've like done a theater play like no it shit. got that bad like i've done a theater play like you acted or you wrote it everything wow and it's because i had to right like, it was because like i was dealing with the struggle of what you were saying of like people were saying like oh you do too much and it was discouraging me because it wasn't that i was trying to do too much it was just that i needed to do these things to like get the stuff out of me right and then, like, it just became to a point where being that I was I was working at Wardrobe quite a bit. Like, that used to be, like, my study thing, like, working at Wardrobe for some quite big things in New York. And working through that, I met, I was able to, like, get into the network of all the theater troops. And I met, like, a theater troupe that became, like, family, tribe. So we Got sat it. down. And they did these processes and concepts that were, like, I never seen done before. They, like, got things out of me that I don't even know, like, how did you even do that? Just right. by writing this or drawing a picture and telling me to do that or do that. Just and change your perspective. Change my perspective. And they were just like oozing all this stuff out of me. So what happened was I made all the music and then we worked on all the, co I did mostly the, all the costumes and sets with help from others within this thing. Mm -hmm. And um, basically it all came together. Everyone played their part, pulled it in. And at the end of it all, it was like a one night shebang sold out everything in wow. um, brooklyn and basically what yeah, it was huge. appreciate it man i even literally had a band in the pulpit playing the music live i had the work. my homie like from pack div like he was literally on decks just like keeping it all together like conducting the whole thing and then like it was crazy man like that whole thing was just to like get the music across to be honest like because it. it's like you got the clothes that depict it, you got the sound that depicts it, you got the feel. Right. So it was like a whole story on time travel. So like I acted, that. so it's more like a musical. So I performed the songs and acted the parts and the segments were like little stories in between. <laughs> so yeah, that's like more, that's just like to go to say like, don't let anyone So you pretty much just mixed you. like, that's like, it. All, all parts Everything. of the industry Everything. into one into thing. Into one. You got Come music, one night. you got fashion, that's you got... It. Uh, you know, theater. Set design, theater. You got everything. It all, man. So, like, anybody who's anybody, anybody gets involved in that Anything. Shit. That's it. That's tight. So, I've been working I feel on like the that's other you one. as a person. That's it, man. That's just I feel like, like that's just you walking and I as appreciate, a person. I appreciate people that, like, see it like that, like right. you. Because it's like, it is, man. Like, honestly, I'm not one of those things. Like, I'm just literally, like, all of it because I need to express it. Like, I need a way. Like, you just can't use this one way, you know? Right. Last time you came in here, you actually gave me this cassette right here. The Black Agassi. You said it was like a limited uh, run. Like limited you made like run. Like 100 of them or something like that? There were 200. There were 200. That was so it. if you have one, hold on to that. Yeah, if you got that, hold that. That's the first glitter tape. And um, the next one's coming out soon, actually. The next release. So it's just like a glitter theme. The glitter theme. It's not even a theme. It's just like my blood pumps glitter. And that was um, <laughs> Black Agassi. Yeah. Kind of based off of like Andre Agassi. I back am in the, the day. Black Agassi, yeah. And why do you say that? Because like everything that he was about, like the style and the finesse, it just was my thing. Everyone's paying so much attention to like Jordan. I love Jordan. It's all good. But like that's not really what like I was locked into. I was locked in. I was trapped just like flipping on all the colors and like all the lava dripping and like just all the tech challenge, all the acid. You know, just early on, just like acid wash, everything, right. wigs, headbands. Like, I love wigs. Like, all about the wigs, all about the acid, all about everything. Like, he's just like the man for me. Mm -hmm. And then, like, his shoe silhouettes were like, oh, shit. Yeah, I remember when, that, the like, back when I was in grade school, and they're like the green, white, blue, teal, you know, the <sighs> yeah, ones? Yeah, that one. I was like, man. man. And I, I never got a pair. I wish I did, but they yeah. were so tight when they came out. They were man, like, those things than the were so tight. Exactly. I'm like, these were so, yeah. So, they came back recently. I think they brought them back. They brought them back like a, a few times. Back. Yeah, they did retro those. But um, yeah, it was just basically I wanted to pay homage to Andre Agassi because I really liked him a lot. And I guess I, dude used to party pretty hard. He used too. to party really hard. Yeah, he's and party, still killed the tennis. Still game. killed the tennis game, man. And like, yeah, I got into playing tennis actually when I was in college. Okay. So I picked up tennis because I fell kung fu, which sucked. Wow. Basically, you my, really are a man of multiple bro, talents. And then who like, fails Kung Fu? Right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why I spell Kung Fu, man. Like, my Kung Fu... I'm not even going to call him a Kung Fu master, man. He's like a... He's a Kung Fu communist, bro. This is what he did. He was like, all right. Kung Fu Kong. 
Kung Fu Kong, bro. This is what he did. He was like, all right, you're going to go down to the bookstore and you're going to buy my DVD. Oh, then you're going to no. buy my magazine. And like, I'm going to give you points based off if you show back up with your supplies. So I'm like, wow. all right. So I go to the fucking store, school store, and see this dude on the thing, like, and all this little obnoxious poses and shit. Right. I'm like, bro, I know what this is about. You just want us to know that you got a fucking Kung Fu DVD and all of that. Right, and buy my merch. Buy my merch. Like, bro, I need a grade. I don't want to buy your merch. Right. So I'm I had trying to, to learn how to karate chop so like, some people. You know? Right, like, me being me, I'm like, nah, man, this shit's free. Like, I'm going to take this school education, like, okay. learn all the moves, which I did. Right. And then in the end, I you refused like to buy his thing. Fu, you don't get belts. You just get grades because okay. it was like literally for school. Oh, okay, like gotcha. to get my rest of my points. So it was ill. My so basically, he failed me because I didn't buy his book. I'm like, nah, man, I'm not buying your book. Go buy my record. Right. <laughs> so basically, right. I didn't buy his book. Way. So he failed me. And then he was like, yeah, you come back at the beginning of the next semester after the holiday. and We'll see. Let you do it over again. Right. I'm like, no, man, I'm not playing your game. I'll take the F. Yeah. So like Same. he was like, I'll give you, I'll do you one better. I'll give you an incomplete. So he did. End of the story. Took the incomplete. Needed a grade. Signed up for tennis. Loved tennis. Took tennis one. Took tennis two. Got uh, invited to Manhattan Tennis Club after tennis three. Damn, bro. And then that You're was like, it. It was not for me, but tennis. Exactly. Strong. Copped the MCM tennis racket, and that was it. Like the I was MCM like, tennis racket. Yeah, when I got that, I was like, I have to. So what is that? Tennis Describe now. that. Is it like an actual? It's a thing cognac it's a... leather MCM tennis racket made out of a garment bag. I feel like that's something you would make. Yeah, that sounds so shaman cassette. Yeah, you can make that, but actually, you can. But you buy can that achieve too. it, right? Yeah, so you can or, achieve that. Do you that. buy it, or is it something that you I get? bought it? It was like already. When you knew that was like the golden trophy like, at that point. That was it. I was like, because I was like going to school. Like everyone's like, oh yeah, MCM. What are you making a fashion statement? I'm like, nah, really, I'm about to go play tennis, bro. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, bullshit, whatever. That's no, like, I'm really uh, about to. So like, yeah, it's cool. So do you Functionality. Still follow tennis or do you follow all sports the time? At all? all the time. I'm probably, I follow tennis a lot, and I'm really obsessed with watching old tennis footage and clips and all those things. Right. So I just really like it. Tennis is cool. What do you just YouTube that stuff? YouTube it. You make me want to go there and find some old vintage like tennis shit. I love shit. it, man. <laughs> if you like look at it, because that's what I'm saying. Fashion always comes back full circle. Man, with that. and this is something I talk about all the time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, even music. It always music comes back. The music circle. is look in at that the too. Song that uh, Cardi B and and what's his name? I thought it was Bobby Brown. Right. When the song played on the radio, yep. I was like, and then it was like Cardi B and Bruno yeah, Mars. Exactly. And I was like, yeah. So music comes full circle. Like, it goes full think. circle, man. As long as you're putting the right energy into it and trying to project the, the right. right message, I feel like it and will transcend. And here you are, like repurposing stuff from the original. That's it, man. Like that's it. What are some of your best pieces that you've done fashion wise? Do you think? What are some of your favorites? Some of my favorites fashion wise, a lot of the. I've seen you do some dope I've stuff. Done. Like I think you made. Didn't you make Nathaniel some like Louis Vuitton overalls? Yeah, you or did something? some Louis Vuitton overalls for Nathaniel. That was really that was a really fun one. Um, I've been really having a good time making that. So I was doing this reconstruct deconstructing where you come and uh, come to the shop mm -hmm. and basically you bring me a luxury handbag and I'll chop it up while you watch me and cry. Right. And then um, I'll cut the moccasins apart and I'll reconstruct a pair of moccasins using every screw and rivet in right. your bag that I just chopped up and you cried over. And then you Sick. walk out with your bag on your feet and it's like the most beautiful thing I can make and I don't use a machine. Right. <laughs> How are you not famous for this already? I don't know, man. That's I don't know. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe I'll be famous tomorrow. I mean, you are famous. In my mind, you're famous, man. If you don't know Thank about Shamaka you, you need to know. Nah, it's not about the fame. It's about the love, really, man. Right. It's like, I really appreciate when the few people or the large masses of people know. It's right. all one and the same for me. Like, I go places and people are like... They don't know me, but they're like, who the hell are you? Right. I want to know you. You're a very even. unique person. Yeah, and I appreciate that. So that's why Almost I don't like mind it at all. Too. It's like, yeah, what's man. Going, who is this? I want right. to talk to this guy. What yeah. does he do? That's why I travel a lot because the whole concept of that for me is I don't get discouraged if people don't know me. It's like, all right, let's get to know each other. Right. Like, I'll go to your town. I'll go to any small town, big town. It doesn't matter. I just like want to vibe. That's it. And do you try to stand out and be different when you're I in I don't try it. I can't just, help it. You. Like. Even when I try to, like, not, I still do. I'm right. just like... I love know. it. I see you on Instagram all the time. I'm like, this guy's, like, kills it. Like, just, like, <laughs> even, like, it, your the scenarios. Just, I'll sit there and be like, man, this man is taking <laughs> pictures with... 
I'm like, Shaman can set, man. There's nothing I like you. I appreciate you, man. Like I really appreciate it. I appreciate and, and, and everyone speaking, that's on the vibe. Likewise. And like, and when you're traveling, now, and I get the vibe, because I was just in Korea not that long ago, mm -hmm. and people look, you know, I stand, I'm a little bit taller than your average yeah. Korean, you mm -hmm. know? And... Obviously, I'm not Korean. Exactly. So I get on a train full of Koreans, and it's like everybody's looking at me and my yeah. homie. Yeah, now you Ooh, see how I feel, yeah. Right, but, but I also like that vibe. It's cool. They, didn't, they mean no harm, like man. They're like interested. That and a yeah, with the gold exactly. Case. People are probably like, They're so interested, man. Yeah. This dude real quick. Like, yeah, what's man. What's really going on here? Yeah, it's really humbling. I love it, man, especially when you get the people that don't mind to say, like, I right. love this thing. Like, right. what is this thing? Like, it's just good energy, man. Like, it's all right. It's all right to say you like something. you vibe with those people probably spark a dope conversation it, or something like That's that. That's it. That's how What's it happens. What's one of the favorite countries you've, uh, like, experienced? Honestly, man, I just keep going back to Ireland. Like, it's been Ireland and South Africa have been, like, magical places for me. Like, okay. Mexico is really magical, too, to be honest. What like, parts of Mexico? Really, like, I like, me specifically, I like Tulum. Because, Tulum. yeah, because there's pyramids on oh, wow. the beach. Like Mayan pyramids. Mayan right? pyramids. And, like, there's all these, like... History. History and, like, little life that you only see running amongst this ruin, you know? Right. And I, and what do you I mean can't by figure it out. Like, people or There's, animals, like, these or? little creatures, like, these little animals that you just don't see anywhere else that right. are just, like, running up and down and around these pyramids. So, you know, it's quite special. And then once you get to the top, you look back and it's like white sands and beautiful beaches. You get the best. It's the oh, best, yeah. man. Like, what else you need? Like, you just, like, climb up there. Yeah, I'm booking just... a ticket tomorrow. That's Whew, nice. Yeah. The funny thing is people go to Cancun, but, like, if you go to Cancun, just hop in one of those little tuk-tuks or, like, a little taxi or whatever. They'll, like, zip you down to Tulum and, like, you'll be in paradise. It's, like, close. But, How like, far people is that? don't Close go. the border here? You know? I have no a idea. Or drive? It's a definitely a flight. Okay. Yeah, it's probably I'm pretty sure it's a flight. Because Tulum's on the other that side. That seems like a spot. Because I like more Tulum's a magic spot. spot, man. That was like my swing. Like when I was living in New York, uh, to get away from New York real quick, I'd catch a quick one to Mexico. Right. Go vibe, catch Tulum. There's a lot of cool people there. They got a lot of people that are on this vibe that try to get you to go on a um, man made boat to Barbados because it's like on some Peter Pan vibe. Like right. everyone's just living a free life on Flip this little. Up the sail and yeah, you got to get on this like homie's boat and they'll take you. Did you do that? I didn't do it. Why is that? Because, like, I don't know, I kind of got freaked out. I did that in Thailand and got taken to some village where like the houses were like on these long stilts and like uh -huh. you could only get there or escape by boat. And like. You feel trapped. Bro, I felt so trapped. And then, like, you couldn't really tell. I wasn't really speaking a language and understanding it. So you don't know, like, yeah. the mannerisms. You just don't know what's going on. There's a and barrier there. Then there's, like, looking through the dark, and there's, like, skulls, like, oh, hell no. screwed into the wall. <laughs> then it's all dark and freaky. You start thinking and I don't know what's thoughts. going on. Right. And I only went because I wanted some weed. Right. <laughs> now here you are. With a bag I'm of some stuck swag. on this island with a bag of swag. Trying to get on a fucking little boat Rethinking or a stick of wood situation. with a motor to get back to land, right. bro. But it's all for the adventure. It was fun. You seem like a pretty spiritual person. <laughs> I am, man. I, to be honest, I am. Like for me, like that's everything. Right. Like once I realize the way these things work, it's not made up. Like, have you had any crazy like spiritual experiences or like? I've had an out of body experience that like kind of blew my mind one time. What was that like? I walked on water. No shit. No shit. Like real life? I literally walked on water. Tell like, me about it. I was that. like dancing on a puddle. Like like without even falling. So and, like and moccasins. So going to like detail, I gotta force. hear about this. Like you walked on water, like so you're basically I had a show and the energy levels were so high and at that point I was drinking before shows. I don't drink before shows at all now. Okay. But at that time, like, I thought that's what I needed. So I was, like, throwing back long bottles right, before the show. Right, liquid courage never hurt anybody Yeah, I'm just, then, like, you know? incredible hawk. I think I even ripped my shirt off on that at that show. Like, it's shit just got crazy. <laughs> yeah, shit got crazy. So, yeah, man, just the energy was so wild. And, like, people were literally, like, singing the words. And, like, at that point, that's why I was like, whoa, this is crazy. It's right. just for real. So I'm like doing it again, and then, like, they're really saying the words. They're really not joking, and it just kind of took me over to the point I've never really. It's, like, one of the first times I experienced that type of reception with the crowd. Right. It's such a massive this? crowd. This was in New York at okay. Webster Hall. And, um... Which is, like, 
if you don't know about Webster Hall, it's like legendary <laughs> venue in New York. It's a nice one, man. Right. So it was real like it's an accomplishment. Yeah, man. It was moving, but the wild thing about it is I can't watch the video. Like Oh, there's a video of it? There's a video if you can find it. <laughs> wow. But like I tried watching it one time and I just couldn't watch it. It's like not in a bad way, but it's like a, it's very spiritual. Like it's right. trippy. People say that you shouldn't watch it. Like I say that I shouldn't watch it, but like I don't need to watch it because I know I know and like it's there. So That's crazy. Like I peeked at it. Right. <laughs> you were th- that was you. Yeah, I'm talking <laughs> about full force, a thousand full throttle, everything, and like nothing's wrong. Like, That's crazy because um, nowadays, all this like. Stuff is surfacing where mm-hmm. people are having like extra powers and like it the is. ability to like do or or see things. Yeah, because there's parts of the mind, body, and soul that are untapped. Right. And, like once you realize that you can tap those things and channel into those things, then right? It's powerful. You figure they it say out. the mind's powerful. a powerful thing. It is, man, and it's not like it's not said lightly. Like right. it's very powerful, man. That's what I appreciate in it, and that's been like my quest, my spiritual quest, has been to utilize these parts of the brain, like. Seriously, like the whole man, it's it's real. Like no, it's dope because like even even myself, like it intrigues me every day. Just thinking like that, like we only use like a certain small percentage we of our do, brain. We do a it's very like between small like thirty percent. and fifty percent of our brain. It's like, not even that. Imagine, we don't even use that much. Right. Like, imagine yeah. what the we could do with the rest. Yeah. Obviously, we have a brain that's capable of doing yeah. a whole lot more. Right. So that, that exactly. the thought of that just intrigues me all the time. I'm like, man, we, we could probably, because I know for a fact, I met this guy, Yuri Geller, in, yeah. and I lived in England for a while. I'm uh-huh. not sure if you've heard of the guy, but he can bend spoons with the power of his mind. Oh, wow. Now, you I believe can it. literally hold a spoon, yeah. and you go like this, yeah. touch it with his finger, and the yeah. spoon starts curling yeah. and twisting. I'm like, yeah. and when he did it for me, I, hand, I sat yeah. there and did the thing. Yeah. I'm like, I started getting like chills on my right. back, and I'm like, this is really happening. Yeah. And he's talking about other stories of how he stopped the Big Ben clock. And yeah. This is legit. The, the dude's legit. Oh, yeah. I believe it. And he's got, and I'm like, to me, thinking, and ever since then, this was when I was in my early 20s, and I was yeah. like, okay, so people have the ability to do things. He knew, he told me, he's like, I knew I could do this as a kid. My yeah. grandma used to get mad because I was bending the spoon. He's like, I thought it was normal. Yeah. You know, I'd be in my room and just, dun, 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 dun. you know, he could just always do it. You know, so I feel yeah. like, that's more and more common. It's more of that stuff surfacing nowadays. It I is. Feel like the more people are in tune with that stuff, it's kind of cool. It is, like, man. It, it very is. It's very I much hear so. Here you are walking on water. That's it, man. Like <laughs> that's there's awesome. so much more to come. Like it's it's real. Right. Um. So you got like like I said, you you've come from a hip hop background. You formed the band Boy, Bon Voyage. Bon Voyage. Yeah. Um. There's another song on here from this hip hop folder that you sent me. Bougie. Bougie. The Gant Man remix. Yeah. So that one's never been heard. That is a very special archive thing. We were meant to do a record on uh, Record Store Day. We were okay. Seven Inch on Record Store Day last year, but some things we wound up getting caught up doing some other obligations, so we kind of like it didn't happen. Right. But so we had all these great pieces of reworks for our record. Our fr- Bougie was our first Bon Voyage single. Okay. So we had some really amazing uh, people that contributed to recreating and reworking this record. So Bougie was one of them. And like, um, Gant Man is very influential for me because... Yeah, how'd you guys come together? The the way me and Gant came together was another one of my wild brain ideas. So I thought that since at the time I was working on a project out of uh, Paris called GTO. Okay. So GTO was another French guy that I was working with called Razik. And like we were creating quite a bit of noise on like the booty bass sound and like starting to dab- dabble more into like the houseier, like the acid stuff. And mm-hmm. that was like a hard barrier. Didn't get into anything that Bon Voyage started to do. But it was kind of like morphing towards that. It's like the precursor to that. And then, um, I forgot where the fuck I was going with that story. It's all good. Let's get into it. Bougie, Gantman remix right here. Shaman <laughs> Cassette. We out here, y'all. Hollywood, <laughs> California's here. Dash Radio. <laughs> she bougie and she know it. She bougie and she know it. Somebody tell me what the definition of bougie is. She know what does bougie it? mean? Okay. She bougie and yeah, she know it. She way too good for that. Cause she bougie. She bougie. Okay. She bougie and yeah, she know it. And she way too good for that. Cause she bougie. Hey. She bougie. I ain't going to McDonald's. I ain't riding no train. I ain't 
ain't wet, no riding pants unless it's a ball man. I ain't cooking or cleaning. I ain't rolling no blocks. Why every time you up in my face with them go fries? Cause I'm bullshit. She way too good for that. She bullshit. She don't know how to act. She bullshit. She bougie and she know it. She bullshit. She way too good for that. I can't tell me nothing that my mama did. Shaman Cassette with another one. Back man. at it. I like that one. That one got me out of my seat. Appreciate a bit. it. See, that's what it do. You, exactly. You didn't really see that, but that's I what it does. We're getting it in. That's I had the Gucci does. mask on exactly. too. So you had the Gucci shin guards on. Gucci shin guards with the Gucci Jason, yep. the Jason mask. Playing soccer. Mask. Playing soccer with the globe. Uh You've been on Gucci before kicks. half these Gucci gang kids. I have, man. Days, That's why I'm kind of phasing out with it, to be honest. But like, what's the next for you, bro? Since you were like the, I'm doing like, I don't know, man. Holograms and 3M. Ooh, I see you. Three bro. dimensional, 3M, I see 3D, you. all I love of it. How- you're all about the full circle thing. That's it, man. Like I see every time you're doing something, it's like, that's man, way to get on that and and, and bring it back. Yeah, one time that's what's for fun about it for me. I don't find joy in doing things that everyone else is doing. Right. Like I just don't like. I don't knock it, but I personally don't find joy in it. Like I guess people say that I'm an innovator. Like that's what they tell me, and I guess like I agree because if that if that's what it means. To not want to do what everyone else is doing, then I accept being an innovator. Right. Like I'm always looking for the next thing that hasn't been done, and like that's just the only way that I feel happy about creating. I can't keep my eyes off this uh, this brass or gold ring that yeah. you have. It's like a four finger ring that's yes. going on here. Now, yes. now, please explain to this. Can you zoom in on okay. this real quick? So, so this is dope. First for, of all, it looks like it's worth like a half million dollars. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> so who who are the people? There's like four faces on this ring. Okay, so. You familiar with uh, Mount Rushmore? Mm-hmm. So this is the the black version of Mount Rushmore. Okay. It's Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey. Dope. Yeah. So my homie. Um, how, how how fitting? Because it's like Black History Month too. Yeah, exactly, man. You've probably been rocking it for a while though. Yeah, the homie actually blessed me. Um, big shouts to my brother Johnny Nelson in New York. He's got a company where he's really casting and molding all this beautiful jewelry. Yeah, that's dope. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, he's got this this gold matchstick with the red enamel tip. Oh, sick. Yeah, he's he's the man. Is that his like his signature thing? His whole signature thing. I remember Johnny like like a bar through the ear. Yeah, so it started back like in New York, just running around the scene, like young heads running. 
he um used to have a matchstick, so he became like known as the guy, like the punk kid that's running with around matchstick. with the matchstick. That's like his signature. It was his signature, and then once he developed and came into his artistry, he learned these crafts, and so he brought his thing full circle. Right. So he turned that matchstick that everyone admired into a gold instead of wood, right. and he enamel instead of the the match top. He went platinum. With he it. went platinum. So I, I appreciate it. him blessing me with, with that. And that's dope, man. Let me. Um, speaking of, have you seen the Black Panther movie? I have not seen that I yet. I want to see. I've heard great reviews. I need to see that. I heard yeah. the soundtrack is super dope. Is it dope? I would play some stuff, but you sent me so much good music, I'm not going to play anything off <laughs> that right now. Yeah, no. But um, Kendrick's on like, I like every that. other That's song. That's what I need. He needs to be. And I've heard great, like everybody I talk to is the like, voice yo, I the Black hear. Panther soundtrack. I'm, I, I'm ashamed to say I've yeah. only heard bits and pieces of it. I should just sit down. I wonder if I can watch thing. that in VR anywhere. I heard the movie's super dope. I gotta see it. I was just talking to Sean on other on a on a on a downside. Mm -hmm. I guess the Tupac movie. I heard just, it was I. Right. I heard it wasn't so good, but I'll, I'll, I'll give it my own opinion. You mm -hmm. know, when I see it for myself, because I've heard it's hard to yeah. judge other people's reviews. Yeah. Everybody looks for something different when exactly. you see something like that. Yeah. But um, I have to take a peek for it. Right, those are two movies that I want to yeah. see. Yeah. I probably movie. do want to see that Black Panther. Yeah, that's gonna be yeah. tight. I heard it's good things. I mean, obviously, yeah, I mean, man. Kendrick's all over. Right, it, so Kendrick's the man. I love Kendrick. But um yeah, so what what kind of stuff can we expect from you in the upcoming months? You got any big projects you're working on or? Yup, um, like and myself have a new tape coming out soon called MCM Paper Bags. Okay, that's going straight direct to cassette tape. I love that. Yeah, man. And I need then, my uh, tape. That's it. My, my oh, this got like no, no lie, like you can. You're coming to the house, bro. I got to show yeah. you the boombox collection. Yeah, it's exactly. Long overdue, yeah, but. you can uh, mark my word. There's gonna be. Five, yeah, I'll say five Shema cassette tapes that's gonna come out this year. They're just wow. all ready. They will finish them all up. Are they Two all of them already the have ones? release dates. Part of the glitter I'm only series? only glitter tapes. That's okay. it. So glitter that tapes. one you gave me last time, the uh, Black Agassi, yeah. that's is that the first of that's the That's the first of the glitter tape series. So we can look forward to three more. Oh yeah, three more series. of this whole glitter tape series. Yeah, Both so get out there and get them. Where can they buy these? These can be bought. Or do you have to catch you in the streets or something? Nah, actually, out there's the trunk actually over here, no. Pico. Actually, there's gonna be a lot of things done. There's gonna be exhibitions where they're gonna be sold there. There's gonna be release events for this one. It's gonna take place. Then there's gonna be record store vibes for these like put them in tape um between since the time of the last tape release like right. it's became very popular like, they like even, people you, love buying vinyl yeah. and buying records i mean if they brought back eight tracks right people, people will go crazy for, for it yeah it's like something swaggy, yeah the you know? interest like, is there now so now i'm able to like get these tapes in more places like for make them available for people so who knows like i'll be on the block with it too like right I'll be Catch on the street, the street with these. Catch me tape. on the street. Catch me at the beach with I'm these be tapes. The first one. You let me know when that release pops. I'm you. calling you up. I'm driving you. up. Exactly. I'm pulling up right now. I need nah, that tape. we're going to pull up with your boom box and put right. it in there first off. Well, I got to show you some shit. Yeah, first off. I got, I got one of the boom boxes, speaking of, that has like the TV built in too. <sighs> I love. Yeah, I don't know I why, would. but I just love old oh, shit. They're like, I love old like, shit, man. The sound when you hit the little click. Right. The, the metallic ringing sound. I remember as a kid growing up too, like that was my... I think that's one of the pieces that really got me into the music industry. Mm -hmm. My dad was in the music industry, but then I got this little red boombox yeah. as a kid. Yeah, red alone, just the like. Oh, dude, like it was a piece like of so candy. It had an auxiliary in. Yo, that's a, a head. dual cassette deck, so you could record oh, from advanced. one to the other, and then I was like, you got over. all you need, yeah. And a mic input, so a mic oh, and man. an aux in. Yeah. So I was that's getting kind of creative needed. as a kid. My yep. dad was like, Dad, I need a cable that does this. You know, I'm trying to connect yep. things to mm -hmm. it. I was talking about. I remember one school project I did where it was like. I like talked over this tape and yeah. it was like this space tape that oh, I made. Wow. It was like my report, my, like, nice. my project. Yeah. And I'm like, and I made all these sound made effects and everything. I wish I'd know where that tape is to this day. Oh man, probably, that sounds dope. Probably hilarious. You straight made an album. But I, I don't know why, I just still got love for it. I got a tattoo man, on that's all. my arm. You know? Dude, like, where's I just, it at? It's right Bam. here, a little cassette. I got the, this one's to scale. See? I knew I liked you, Sean. Yeah, check the cool shit. My like, God. you do this one. It goes like this. I'm oh, like, and I got a boombox. Right. Do you? I don't have a boombox. Yeah, this that. is like on some Teddy Ruxpin we all shit. Like, tattoos you just shit. stick it in there. The boombox is probably one of my favorites. Oh, that's ill. Even the dude who's it's a good it, he's one. like, yo, this, I like this that's one. That's well done. That's uh, well done for the like, boombox nation. On there with the oh, man, that's extra. ill for the boombox nation. I might have to get the Gucci boombox tattooed on. Do you still have that boombox? Oh, uh, there's been many. I've actually made quite a few. So you there's just been many. is this a piece that you sell? 
Yeah, I actually sell that piece now. Do you have a shop like where people can buy some of your art or uh, some of your like? I do pop up shops. Like I like to keep uh, keep off the grid. Right. To just pop up. That's a, that's a, that's kind of big though, because yeah, I feel like man. a lot of designers in LA. I've heard. I mean, we had a, a designer Prince Takaro's on the show not that long ago. Oh, he's he was talking about dope. how he got popped for somebody like because he like mocks brands and he'll yeah. put like instead of E Spirit, it'll say let's I say, get I, it. I know? actually like, admire his work. I've never met him, but he's like, got an embroidery machine. I love his work. And he me does too. have an embroidery machine. <laughs> he he told me he was like he's like I no, he does. Like, well, he can do wonders <laughs> with an embroidery machine. That's he why he's that. like he's in Candyland. Right. Big ups to him. He can do anything. And he's man. another creative that also brings the full circle yeah, spectrum back. Yeah, he's got back. the full circle spectrum. I think spectrum. he had that brand. It was called like 1996 or 1990, 1992. 1992. Yeah, like that was very prolific. Yeah, and We're from I, the same planet. I like that guy. Like, he's dope. I, I see similarities. <laughs> he's dope. You know? Um, yeah. One last song before we close out the show. Uh, Dust the Erasers. Yup, for all you after school special ass mother cuffers. <laughs> Go to detention and dust the fucking erasers. Right there. Public service announcement. Shaman Cassette right here on the <laughs> Kickback Show. Dash Radio. Let them know where they can find you on social media and all the websites and whatnot. Where are you at? Shaman Cassette on Instagram. S-H-A-M-O-N-C-A-S-S-E-T-T-E. And then Bon Voyage, all proper spelling. Bon Voyage NYC on Instagram and Twitter. Bon SoundCloud. Voyage. SoundCloud. Bon Voyage NYC. Be on the lookout for those glitter tapes, too. It's coming soon. 2018, Shaman Cassette. Thanks for coming on the show. Like it took away my stadium. Gotta 